hello everyone welcome back to my channel um today we're going to be talking about buying your first home and i hope this video serves as a nice guide for you um i'm going to go over some primary topics to help you get to the next level uh we're going to talk about the type of loans that you can get the best way to find your home where your credit should be at what is underwriting and what is closing cost and hopefully after we go over all the topics you can have a good idea of how much you really need to get into your first home because it's a lot lower than you may think it is um i know i thought it was much higher and i was saving blindly so if you if you're anything like my past self then this video should help you so the first thing we're going to go over are the types of loans you're going to need um unless you have a large inheritance waiting around for you or you're you're very wealthy you're probably going to need a bank loan to fund your home purchase. So there are four major types of loans that most people use to get real estate. And I'm going to talk about them. Um, the first loan is a conventional loan. Uh, it's, it's, it's your, it's your typical loan. You need anywhere between, uh, 10 to 20% of the home's value as a down payment. Um, and you need pretty decent credit to qualify for them. But this is your, your standard loan. Uh, this is what most real estate purchases are funded with. And um, if you can get a conventional loan, it, it, it has its pros and its cons um, that we could probably go into later. The next loan type is an FHA loan. Uh, I think the acronym stands for Federal Housing Administration, um, but it also has a nickname called First Time Home Buyers Loan. And the reason why they call it that is obviously most first time home buyers use it. It's the one I use. Most people in my family use that loan. Um, and what makes it good for first time home buyers is you only need 3.5% down or 3.5% of the home's value as a down payment. Uh, on top of that, your credit doesn't have to be as high to qualify for other loans. Uh, if you have a 580 credit score or higher, you can qualify for an FHA loan. Um, it's good to be a little bit higher than that because you know it, it, giving yourself some grace is always good when it comes to finances. Uh, but it's it's definitely the the lowest credit benchmark among most loans you can get. Uh, the next type of loan is called the Fannie Mae Home Ready or Freddie Mac Home Possible. Um, and these name these loans go by different names depending on what bank you get them with. Uh, like Chase Bank calls it the Dream Makers Loan. So uh, it, it has a little uh, nuance to it, but in a nutshell, it's a conventional loan that only requires 3% of the home's value as a down payment. So it's very low. So it gets the same pros and cons as a conventional loan, but the down payment is lower. Uh, and the reason why that sounds too good to be true is because there is an income cap on it. Um, it's designed for uh, working families, honestly. You can't make too much money to qualify for these loans. So you also need really good credit. So you need really high credit and like moderate to low income to get these loans. And, and then the income is based on the area that you're moving into. So I don't know the exact specifics, but you can't make more or too much more than the the average income of the area that you're moving into. So uh, make sure you look those loans up to see if you qualify for them. But that's what they're called. The next loan we're going to talk about is the VA loan. A VA loan is... I personally think they're the best loans for first time home buyers, but uh, you can only get those loans if you are a veteran. So uh, it's one of the benefits of serving our country and protecting us. And it's a very good loan to buy your home with. It allows you to get out of a lot of ex expensive closing costs. It allows you to get out of certain insurances that the rest of us are going to have to pay sometimes for the lifetime of the loan. So. I definitely recommend getting a VA loan if you qualify for them. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is credit. Uh, credit is very important when it comes to home purchases. Uh, there are certain benchmarks you're going to need to qualify for certain loans. 
Uh, like I said, you need 580 to qualify for an FHA, but you typically need about uh, 640 to 650 to qualify for the other loans. And the higher your credit is, uh, the lower your interest rate is going to be. Um, but there are some ways to get around that interest rate and credit correlation. Uh, for one, it's uh, all about timing when you buy your home can definitely dictate your interest rate. Uh, for example, in 2021, summer 2021, we have record low interest rates. So uh, the interest rates that people were getting last year with good credit are now people with normal or even bad credit are getting better interest rates today. So timing can definitely uh, help as far as interest rates uh, in the same way credit can. Um, but what you really should get out of that is, um, if you are in a record low interest rate time period, uh, as long as you reach certain benchmarks for your credit, it might be better to move forward and, and purchase your home, um, instead of, you know, trying to get your credit to that magical number that you think you may need, but you may not actually need it. Uh, as, like I said, as long as you hit those benchmarks, you should be okay. So the once you got your credit and you got your loan in your sights, you want to start looking for your house. Uh, the best way to find a house, in my opinion, is using the internet. Uh, there's many apps you could download, many websites you can go to. I personally like Zillow. Uh, Zillow is pretty good. Um, and that's not your end-all, be-all app, but is just to get you started. Um, looking at the type of houses that may be of interest to you, you know, townhomes and condos, having a large data sample of what prices generally are in your area is gonna help you make a, a better decision. Um, because if you're looking for, you know, four, bed, four bedroom, three bathroom houses uh, in certain areas, looking at an app like Zillow can give you a lot of different prices over a long period of time can give you, you know, you almost start to feel like an expert in home pricing um, as opposed to just a complete amateur. If, if you don't do your own due diligence looking for your own home, you may end up spending too much for a house that may be like across the street to like a nice winery or something like that may be no interest to you. So you may be overpaying for, you know, a commodity or a tourist attraction that is not important to you. So it's really good to search online to get a good idea of what home prices are in your area and then move on from there. Like, you know, then you hire your agent and then you put in your offer and things like that. But definitely recommend downloading apps and doing your due diligence and just getting a good idea of what your home's value is. So after you found your home, you got your credit right, and you picked the right loan, you're going to have to get a pre-approval letter. Uh, and this pre-approval letter is is what you use to shop with. Um, this is, uh, you, you're going to go to your bank and you're going to, you know, you're going to ask for a pre-approval letter and they're going to say you qualify for X amount. And you should look for homes under that amount. Um, and once you find your home, you're going to hire your agent and then you're going to send in your offer. After you send in that offer, they're going to give you a closing date for buying your home. The closing date can be 10 days. It could be 90 days from when you put in your offer. But typically they're around 30 days. And uh, in that 30 day window is where you have to secure your loans that we talked about earlier. Um, and you're gonna go through a loan process called underwriting. And underwriting is a very extensive background check about where your finances are just generally, how many bank accounts you have open, open what do your retirement accounts look like, your wages, how you get paid, how much you get paid. It's, it's the most extensive background check most people go through in their life. It's underwriting. It's even more 
instinctive than some uh, law enforcement background checks. So um, to prepare yourself for underwriting long before you put in your offer and you found your dream home or, you know, any home for that matter, uh, you want to start getting your paperwork in order, find all your driver's licenses, find your birth certificate, your marriage license. Um, if, if you have a, if you have inconsistent employment or you're somewhat of a private contractor, I recommend you start saving your paychecks, your paycheck stubs right now. Um, get all your tax documents for two, maybe even three years back. You want everything in order because if you have a 30 day to closing date and you you got to get copies of your birth certificate and your driver's license you're going to have a lot of problems you're going to miss your closing date and most people even with everything in order uh the last thing that holds them up is underwriting underwriting is really going to be what holds a lot of people back so make sure you are prepared for it make sure you understand what it is and get get your things in order get your house in order is what they like to say um the last thing we're going to talk about is uh closing costs now i have my own video that i'm probably going to drop a link down in this video for going into great detail of how they calculate closing costs everything that they're paying for and uh and how much it costs but um to, to keep it short for this video the work it takes to gather your money gather the title of the house that you're purchasing and all of the legal requirements involved in that they're going to charge you for it uh there isn't any free labor so gathering the funds and all of those things that i just said is going to cost you some money and uh that's typically a large out-of-pocket expense um if you watch my video and you know what exactly they're charging you for then you can you can just correlate that video to whatever it is that you're buying I recommend that you save around $15,000 for closing costs. Just assume it's going to be around there. And that's $15,000 plus your down payment. So depending on the loans we talked about earlier, closing costs can really throw a wrench into your savings goals. So just remember, uh, be prepared for closing costs. So now that we're going over everything, we can have a general idea of how much a home costs. Uh, depending on your area, most homes in the United States are around 300,000. Um, uh, if you live in very expensive areas like, you know, Manhattan or Los Angeles, they're, they're going to be way higher than that. And if you live in lower income States, same thing, it's going to be a lot lower. So if you have an FHA loan, and uh which is about three and a half percent down plus around fifteen thousand dollars in closing costs uh and you have some seller's credits and you've negotiated some things with your agent at closing you should save around twenty thousand dollars twenty twenty thousand dollars plus or minus you know two or three thousand dollars should get you in most homes in the united states if there's here's another tip that i think you should uh pay attention to your first home doesn't necessarily need to be your dream home because there are many studies out there that can verify what I'm about to say, but most people spend about five years in their first home. They, they, they just, they sell it. They sell it and move on. Sometimes they downsize, sometimes they upsize, but five years is typically the length of your first home. So if you move into a home that you can barely afford because you think it's your dream home, uh, if you're like the rest of the country, you're probably going to be moving out of there in five years anyway. So I think your first home, your you should focus on it being affordable. Um, it being affordable completely changes everything because you're no longer a slave to your housing. Now you have this appreciating asset that you can actually afford. You can you know raise your family and you can position yourself for your next home purchase. And even if you decide to stay, then you're, you know, you're gathering a lot more equity and you're gaining a lot more wealth because it's easier for you to manage your day-to-day -day life expenses. So, uh, but that's just a tip for me. You know, I'm just a guy on YouTube. You don't, you can go buy a mansion if you want to, but 
definitely I think you should focus on affordability um, for your first home purchase. So I hope this little guy helped you into um, buying your first home. Um, I definitely think you should pay attention to underwriting and closing costs and uh, good luck.